If you caught the first presidential debate between Joe Biden and Donald Trump for 2020, you may have noticed the after-debate commentary by the news networks. It was uniformly with one takeaway, that Donald Trump fails to denounce white supremacists during debate. This is the headline from ABC News. Now, this was a formerly respectable news division. ABC News apparently only works for the Democratic Party. Since they know Donald Trump denounced racism and white supremacy three years ago back in Charlottesville, Virginia. And you can see here Newsweek, which ceased publication as a print periodical because of their biased reporting. Donald Trump tries to court black voters after refusing to denounce white supremacy. What we have to do is review what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia in 2017. In Charlottesville, Virginia, the local city council had decided that they were going to remove one or more statues honoring Confederate heroes such as Robert E. Lee. This was a decision by the Charlottesville City Council. A small group of counter-protesters sought permission from the city to protest this removal. This small group of counter-protesters is what Donald Trump was referring to when he said that there were some very fine people in the protest. These were simply local citizens that wanted to honor their heritage by retaining this privately funded and privately paid for Robert E. Lee statue. Events swiftly ran out of control, however. The Democrat mayor and the Democrat governor of Virginia lost control of the situation and they refused to enforce the law. It's important to note the sequence here of what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia, because a person died during these events. You had the initial tiny group of peaceful protesters who do not want to see the statues removed. Then there formed a large violent crowd of Democrat slash progressive slash socialist slash Antifa protesters, counter protesters, who wished to violently attack people supporting this statue. Thanks to social media, Quickly, groups of other violent people who were unaffiliated with the original peaceful protest showed up to counter the violent leftist protesters. These two groups went at it with shields, clubs, and sticks. This has nothing to do with the initial group that simply wanted to preserve their heritage. Donald Trump was trying to hold an infrastructure press conference, and all the reporters had a specific agenda. The reporters didn't care about infrastructure and they had no infrastructure questions. They wanted to blame President Donald Trump for these protests which led to the death of a female counter protester when one of the uh, white nationalists ran her over with his car. The news media, they did not blame the Democrat mayor of Charlottesville for this death. They did not blame Democrat Governor Terry McAuliffe a Clinton crony for this death. Blaming the actual officials involved in Virginia was not the goal of the news media. The news media had a specific goal to say that Donald Trump was the driver of the car that ran over this girl. The news media did not care about any of the events or issues in question. They didn't care about the original protesters who wished to protect their heritage. All they cared about was seeing this as an opportunity to smear Donald Trump. Now, for perspective, the Obama-Biden administration had multiple mass shootings and terror attacks during the time that President Obama and Vice President Joe Biden ran the country. Not once did the news media say that these shootings or attacks were the fault of the President of the United States. President Obama was not blamed for the 2015 San Bernardino attack. President Obama and Joe Biden were not blamed for the Boston Marathon bombing. President Obama and Joe Biden were not blamed by the news media for the Pulse nightclub shooting. In fact, the news media tried to make this the fault of candidate Donald Trump, who was not in any political office at the time. President Obama and Vice President Joe Biden were also not blamed for any school shootings that happened during their tenure. Notice that the news media immediately blamed Donald Trump, a partisan agenda with the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting where they tried to make it Donald Trump's fault. There was no such agenda with President Obama and Vice President Biden during this, the school shootings that happened in the Obama administration. So here are President Donald Trump's factual and real remarks 
to the news media attempting to accuse him of being the instigator and cause of the violence and, fat and fatality at Charlottesville, Virginia. The reporters start with a number of premises. The reporters assume Donald Trump admired the Confederacy from the Civil War. The reporters assume Donald Trump admired Confederate generals and their cause from the Civil War. How reporters would think that a man who grew up on New York's Fifth Avenue admired the Confederacy is never explained. All that matters is the narrative. This is a narrative created by the news media. Notice that the Democratic Party is kind of sitting in the background on this. It is Democrat reporters working at Democrat news outlets who created these phony narratives on behalf of the Democratic Party. There was no reason to create this artificial division by reporters. Their only agenda was to cause t racial tensions in America and to then assign blame for those increased tensions to President Donald Trump. This is sheer recklessness by the American news media who hope to create and aggravate racial tensions across the country for no other reason than ratings and to assist the Democratic Party officials who they are reporting on behalf of. The national news media succeeded in blaming President Donald Trump for everything that happened in a Democrat-run state. Does this sound familiar? It's precisely what Democrats have tried to do over George Floyd dying in a Democrat-run city in a Democrat-run state in Minneapolis and Minnesota. But George Floyd was not the first template for the news media. Their first template for this approach was Charlottesville in 2017. Let's listen in on the news conference. Why, why did you wait so long? I didn't wait long. What, why did I didn't wait long. Like I didn't wait long. I wanted to make sure, unlike most politicians, that what I said was correct, not make a quick statement. The statement I made on Saturday, the first statement, was a fine statement. But you don't make statements that direct unless you know the fact. It takes a little while to get the facts. You still don't know the facts. As I said on, remember this, Saturday, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And then I went on from there. Now, here's the thing as to, excuse me, excuse me. Take it nice and easy. I think the driver of the car is a disgrace to himself, his family, and this country. And that is, you can call it terrorism, you can call it murder, you can call it whatever you want. I would just call it as the fastest one to come up with a good verdict. That's what I'd call it. The driver of the car is a murderer. And what he did was a horrible, horrible, inexcusable thing. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? What, let, let me ask you this. What about the fact that came charging, that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any problem? I think they do. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that was a horrible, horrible day. Wait a minute. I'm not finished. I'm not finished, fake news. That was a horrible day, and you have... Uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that, but I'll say it right now. Sir, do you think that the, what you call the alt-left is the same as neo-Nazis? Oh, oh, those people, all of those people, excuse me. I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups, but not all of those people were neo-Nazis, believe me. Not all of those people were white supremacists by any stretch. Those people were also there because they wanted to protest the taking down of a statue, Robert E. Lee. And you know it if you were honest reporters, which in many cases you're not. But many of those people were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. So this week it's Robert E. Lee. I noticed that Stonewall Jackson's coming down. I wonder, is it George Washington next week? And is it Thomas Jefferson the week after? You know, you, all, you really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? Should statues of Robert E. Lee stay up? I would say that's up to a local town, community, or the federal government, depending on where it is located. Are you against the Confederacy? I'm concerned, honestly, about 
race relations in America? And do you think things have gotten worse or better since you took office? I think they've gotten better or the same. I look, they've been frayed for a long time. And you can ask President Obama about that because he'd make speeches about it. But I believe that the fact that I brought in, it will be soon, millions of jobs. You see where companies are moving back into our country. I think that's going to have a tremendous positive impact on race relations. We have companies coming back into our country. We have two car companies that just announced. We have Foxconn in Wisconsin just announced. We have many companies, I say pouring back into the country. I think that's going to have a huge positive impact on race relations. You know why? It's jobs. What people want now, they want jobs. They want great jobs with good pay. And when they have that, you watch how race relations will be. Are you putting what you're calling the alt-left and white supremacists on the same moral plane? I'm not putting anybody on a moral plane. What I'm saying is this. You had a group on one side and you had a group on the other, and they came at each other with clubs, and it was vicious, and it was horrible, and it was a horrible thing to watch. But there is another side. Well, I do think there's blame. Yes, I think there's blame on both sides. You look at, you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. And, only and, 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 and if you reported it accurately, you would say. And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. Well, no, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down? Are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue because he was a major slave owner? Now we're going to take down his statue. So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers, and you see them come with the, with the black outfits and with the helmets and with the baseball bats. You got a, you had a lot of bad you had a lot of bad people in the other group too. Who treated unfairly, sir? I'm sorry, I just didn't understand what you were saying. You were saying the press has treated white nationalists unfairly. No, I just didn't understand what you were saying. No. There were people in that rally, and I looked the night before. If you look, they were people protesting very quietly the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. I'm sure in that group there were some bad ones. The following day, it looked like they had some rough, bad people neo-Nazis, uh, white nationalists, whatever you want to call them. But you had a lot of people in that group that were there to innocently protest and very legally protest because, you know, I don't know if you know, they had a permit. The other group didn't have a permit. So I only tell you this. There are two sides to a story. I thought what took place was a horrible moment for our country, a horrible moment. But there are two sides to the country. So have you spoken to the family? Have you spoken to the family of the victim of the car? No, I'll be reaching out. I'll be reaching out. When will you be reaching out? Do you plan to go to Charlottesville, Mr. President?